Hey, we're igniting compassion this week, and one of the things I love is James chapter 1 is the final verse. We did Orphan Sunday last Sunday, and this was one of the verses that was mentioned, verse 27, the last verse of the chapter. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this. You know, there's a lot of way to practice our faith as Christians today, but don't you want to have faith that's pure and faultless? Like, that would be really amazing. I feel like so many times I fail in different areas, and maybe you're like that, but James tells him this is a, a faith or a religion that is pure and false, faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows and their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. I, I find, you know, if, if you're new to the gospel, the good news of Jesus, you're new to the Bible, See, Jesus was crucified and rose from the grave so that we could know God and live with Him eternally. We talk a lot about that. It's amazing news. We get to receive the grace and forgiveness of Almighty God. God isn't angry at you. He's not this angry puppet master in the sky that's looking to do bad things to your life and harm you. He loves you more than any human being ever will. He's this good heavenly father that you could run to him. Luke uh, tells us in his gospel that the prodigal son, that the father sees him at a distance and he runs to him with open arms. And even though he squandered all his inheritance, the prodigal son did, this father puts a ring on his finger. The fattened calf is getting ready for a party the night, a robe on his back, his son was lost and now he's found. God loves you. He has such compassion for you. The, the, the letter to the Romans, Paul tells us that we are adopted into the family of God. That if you weren't of Jewish descent, that you weren't the chosen people of God, but because of the work of Jesus, you could be brought in, adopted into that family. It's this beautiful, compassionate, amazing, diverse family of God that our Heavenly Father is leading us and loves us with everything. See, when you're a part of that family then, it means you live out and exemplify the example that he set for us, that you look after orphans and widows and people who are hurting. One of the reasons we challenge people on Orphan Sunday to consider getting involved and making an impact in the area of orphans, if, if Christians just lived out James 1.27, there wouldn't be orphans in the world. If we would actually end uh, not just orphanages, but the foster care system here in the United States. And part of understanding the compassion of Jesus is living that compassion out in the lives of other people, especially orphans and widows. But then it gets to that last part of the verse that says, don't be polluted by the world. That part of the reason we lose compassion, I don't know about you, but you ever have a family member or friend that the older they got, the more crusty they got? You know what I'm talking about? Like get off my lawn type people? And it's just like the older they got, the, the less compassion they had, and they're just too tired, and they can't deal with this anymore, and they're not dealing with your, you know. I'm telling you, it's so easy to have happen, but the life of a Christian doesn't look like that. You know, I know some of you have been dreaming one day you hope to retire and just to sit on your front porch and yell at people to get off your lawn and be able to be that old cranky person. Um, I want to tell you, I've met lots of Christians who are in their 80s and 90s who aren't like that that they're doing more mission now in the last years of their lives than they were early on because they've understood the compassion of God in their life. And what I want to encourage you is don't become polluted by the world where you get jaded towards people who are hurting. So easy. Both ends of the political spectrum can do it. Have compassion in a way that you live to help orphans and widows. It's the example that Jesus set for us. He always made time for the broken and the hurting people of all kinds of different backgrounds, culturally, ethnically, socioeconomically, all of it. Who are the people in your life right now that you need to have compassion for? Because this coming Sunday, don't miss this Sunday, I'm going to be preaching on if God gives you a burden for people that are hurting, how, what do you do about it? How do you make an impact? I love this one of the best parts of our entire church. If you, if you don't know Mercy Road Church, we now are 65 micro churches all over the city of Indianapolis and the state of Indiana living on mission. And it's so cool to see how people, when they're truly empowered to live out the, the burden that God has given them, instilled in them, to go call them to make an impact with, how they could actually do it. I love it. But you'll never see it happen if you come polluted by the world. If you get so jaded and crusted that you can't even see the hurting people like orphans and widows, and the other uh, hurting people in our communities. We got a big vision this coming year. We got an idea of how to house uh, homeless people in, in micro homes. 
We've got an idea of how to make an impact in uh, the community for those who have been hurting because of lost jobs and, and beyond and, and give food resources away from all of our church locations. We, we're, we're dreaming and thinking about, okay, God, in this coming year, 2021, how can we be uniters in our community to live out compassion? Do you want to be a part of the revival that's happening? Because you've been a Christian a long time and you're so jaded and broken and polluted by the world that you can't have a heart for orphans and widows anymore. You're going to miss out this next year on the great work God's going to do through our, our family of churches. And so I'm pumped. I'm excited. This must be a devotional, not about what's happening in our church, but I want to tell you, if you're a Christian out there, you're watching this, or you're new to Christianity, you got to understand the compassion that Jesus lives with and how we could live that out in our daily lives. And if you live that way, when you get done, when you're 95 years old and you're looking back on your life, you're going to have lots of stories to tell. And it's not going to be about how you became jaded. It's going to be about how those orphans and widows became your friends and your family. And you're going to have stories to share for all eternity. That's our dream. Let's ignite compassion, everybody. Will you pray with me? Lord, this week, as we get fired up to see revival happen in our lifetime, that right now, if there's anyone out there that feels like they've gotten jaded, they've gotten polluted by the world, that they, their, their Christian life looks just like anyone else who's not a Christian, that they may be renewed by your grace, your forgiveness, your compassion, Heavenly Father, and they would live out of the overflow of that. Please, Lord Jesus, help us. We beg you, ignite revival. Ignite revival in our lifetime, Lord Jesus. We love you. Give us compassion. Thank you. We pray this in your name. And everyone said, amen. Have a great weekend. We'll see you this Sunday.